Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm showing you how to set up Citron emulator. And a lot of you guys know I've been making Citron guides on different games, but technically those settings should work for every game. So I figured I'd just make a guide on how to set up Citron for any game for this video. Now what you'll need is your selected game, prod keys, and title keys as well as Citron itself. In my case it is Canary Refresh version 0.6 which fun fact is the version where Citron multiplayer on Android now also works. If you guys want a guide on multiplayer with Citron between Windows and Android and stuff like that let me know in the comments and I will make that video. Now anyways, after you've downloaded and unzipped the Citron download, we want to open citron.exe and we're going to double click to add a new folder to the games list. Now in my case, I've called it Citron Games. I'm going to select the folder and I'm going to right click it and check scan subfolders. Now as you can see, my games are not showing up and that's because we have to go to file and open the Citron folder. And in here you'll have a folder called keys and you want to drag your prod and title keys into that folder. So they are here. You want to close the folder, you want to close Citron and then you want to reopen the citron.exe. Now if you want a shortcut all you have to do is click it, right click it and under show more options it should say create shortcut and you can drag the shortcut to your desktop like that. Okay, so now we're going to open up Citron and as you can see, my games are showing up. If they don't show up, like for some reason they did for me in 0.6, I'm using 0.5 right now, just try another version like I'm doing right now. If you ever want to install an update to your game, let's say Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, you go to File, press Install Files to Nandy, you find the update, you press Open and press Install. Now once this is done, it will say it's successfully installed and it will show up right here. Now it goes the same with DLCs. Now that you know that, let's go through the settings. So go to emulation and configure. And in here, I usually don't touch anything. Same goes for system, even though you can change your device name, language, region, time zone, etc. You can even up your DRAM. I'm not touching that either. Again, if you guys want a tutorial on online play, let me know. Now, if you have a little brother or whatever, you can make a new account here so you can both have your save files in, let's say, Pokemon. Now, under CPU, you want to keep this on auto or on accurate. I don't recommend unsafe, but you can always try it. Now, also very important under graphics, make sure you choose Vulkan and make sure you have your correct graphics card selected. If you have Intel HD or AMD Radeon integrated graphics, you should still try Vulkan first, but if that doesn't work, try OpenGL for maybe better performance or any rendering at all. Now me personally, follow these settings, make sure these two are checked. Then for ASTC, I choose GPU decoding, Again, if you have integrated graphics, you might want to change it to CPU or CPU asynchronous. VSync mode, I have it on VSync on. And VDEC, I have it on GPU video decoding. Again, if you have integrated graphics, try CPU video decoding. Full screen mode is borderless windowed because it's less buggy than full screen. Now aspect ratio 16 by 9. Resolution, I personally use 2x, so that's 1440p or 4k. If you're having FPS issues, just run it on 1x. I don't really recommend any of the experimental ones. Now window adapting filter, I pick nearest neighbor, but bilinear is fine. If you want to go for the sharpest sharpest, you can try AMD's super resolution. And there's a slider for FSR right here, which is the Fidelity Super Resolution slider. Now for anti-aliasing, I use SMAA because it's the sharpest. And now we're moving on to advanced graphic settings. Now in here, accuracy level, I keep it on high. Put it on normal if you're having FPS issues. Anisotropic filtering, I put it on 16x, again the sharpest. You might want to keep it on automatic or default if you're having FPS issues. ASTC, I use it uncompressed, which is the best quality. And for VRAM usage, I pick aggressive because my graphics card has a lot of VRAM. But again, if yours doesn't, pick conservative. Now I've checked basically almost everything 
here. I'm actually also going to check the sync frame rate to video playback. So for cutscenes, some of these are Vulcan only, some of these are hacks, but they basically improve your performance. But if you're having any crashes, stuff like that, you might want to uncheck the hack ones or maybe even uncheck all of them and try with each one checking them until you find the one that makes your game crash. Now under audio, here you can pick your output device, the output engine, I wouldn't mess with that, the input device which is your microphone, and the output mode, I always keep it on stereo. And also very important, the volume, I keep it pretty low because I think it's pretty loud. Now you can also mute the audio when in background which is very nice. And now last, we have the important part of the controls. Now I always pick Pro Controller and I connect my Xbox One controller. And as you can see, it's already set up out of the box. You can switch the buttons to whatever you want by clicking on it and it says waiting and then you press the button on your controller. Now for Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, you cannot use the Pro Controller. So you'll have to pick either Dual Joy-Cons, which works out of the box, a left Joy-Con works out of the box. Technically everything should work out of the box. A handheld mode works out of the box. But I do recommend Pro Controller and keeping the console mode on dock for better resolution. Now I turned motion off because my Xbox controller doesn't have it. But if you have a PlayStation controller, you can turn this on. I keep vibration on as well. And again, if you have a second player like your little brother, you want to go to player two, make sure connect controller is green. And then you can pick the controller and then pick their controller that is connected to the computer. Now I don't have any friends, so I'm not going to do that. And uh, yeah, now I'm going to press OK and you should be good to play your game. Now, please leave a like and comment down below if this was useful. Subscribe to the channel and let me know if you guys want that online guide on how to play with your friends. And uh, yeah, please check out the Discord server if you need any help or just want to chat with me and others. And check out my Twitch channel as I'm doing Pokemon streams, Rocket League streams with viewers. And uh, yeah, that's all for me. See you guys later.